Do you want to know words that would describe my life? I would just say fun, crazy, and out of control. While and out. Partying, skateboarding, going to all different countries. Surfing, snowboarding, Tonga, Fiji, met with the king of Fiji. Working with a lot of different bands, slept with girls. Got introduced to cocaine, started shooting heroin. A lot of girls from the Deftones, Olympus Biscuit, sex addiction. I can't think right now. Acid and Hawaiian mushrooms. Every girl was out to burn me in 50,000 watts of sound system. Use them like pieces of meat for eight hours straight. She said, I love you, I wanna be with you, but I'm, I'm gonna get an abortion. I was losing friends that were dying, putting ecstasy, heroin, and coke in syringes and shooting it while smoking crack. Let's start over. High school's when it all started. One of my friends introduced me to the rave scene around that time in 1990. To go to like a rave, you'd have to call a number at 12 o'clock at night, then they give you directions to a map point. So you drive out, from, you know, drive out in the middle of, no, I mean, somewhere in LA, just at a shop or somewhere, you show up on the corner of the street, you pay five bucks to 20 bucks, depending on the, the thing. Then they give you a little piece of paper, like a fortune cookie, <clears throat> with the directions to the place, which led you to Compton. You show up in Compton or Watts, in the ghetto of ghettos, like, straight like neighborhoods where you can get killed. You pull up, you park your car, you go up to this back industrial alley to this to this place and you just hear like woo, woo, woo. start hallucinating, going nuts, you know, with the loud speakers and nitrous balloon, and you're pretty much just, it's just a wild ride at that point. I've had a couple friends that actually went mentally insane. A um, couple guys are schizo, a couple guys, one guy jumped off a cliff on LSD and killed himself, another guy jumped in front of a train, it's just like, I'm, I'm lucky I'm, I'm alive with a sane mind at this point. Well, I grew up in Los Angeles in Southern California. I was just, you know, skateboard like a normal kid and, and surf. And when I was in first grade, I remember finding like a big duffel bag of porn magazines in the back of my school. When I got to fourth grade, I saw a video and I kind of started understanding what was going on in those pictures. It just warped things in my mind. I don't know. When I got to high school, Got introduced to cocaine. It was more experimental at that time in high school, but then after high school is when it started getting more of a habit where it just turned into a routine where that's just what I did. That's just what I did, I just partied. When I started my new job, that's you know when everything took off and we were working with a lot of big name people. So a lot of opportunities open for Playboy Mansion parties. Um, you know, the vivid porn star girls would host our parties. During the summer, we'd go to Europe for a month and a half. We'd film videos, shoot for magazines, travel with musicians and go on tour with them. And then uh, we'd do video premieres with our skate videos. I'd wake up, go to work, go skate, go get wasted. Wake up, go skate, go, or go work, go skate, get wasted. But I had the nice house, I had the, the motorcycles. I literally done laps around the world like three to four times. And, you know, sleep with as many girls as, you know, a lot of girls and the drugs, nothing gets me off anymore. You know, I couldn't, I was empty. It's just nothing made me happy. Then I did a tour through, uh, Mexico, Costa Rica, and Panama City. And I just did cocaine the whole time. One of our team riders found me in my bed with cocaine all over my face and all over the counter, and they couldn't wake me up. They thought I OD'd. All I know is I woke up the next morning, and they said, dude, we thought you were dead last night. And at that point, I just realized I got to change my life. I went to my hotel room. And I was uh, by myself for the first time and sober for the first time in at least a month and a half to two months. And I was in Panama City at the Sheraton Hotel and I just remember going, Jesus, if you're real, 
I need you to prove that you're real to me. And I just, I remember this prayer my dad would say, just say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins, come into my life and fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I said that prayer, I said, prove that you're real to me because I see religion around me. I see my parents and these Christians and I don't relate to them. And I remember going, well, okay, well, what, what can I do now? I said, I need to like read the Bible, right? And I start looking through the, the Panama drawers. There has to be a Bible in the hotel room. They have Bibles all over the world. I'd always see them. And I'd always be like, ugh, you know? I open it up, there's a blue Bible there. It's a Gideon Bible, pull it out. I'd start reading it. I was waiting for this supernatural experience. You know, I've taken a lot of drugs, I've seen a lot of stuff, and I thought that God was gonna show up in his heavenly glory with angels and whatnot, but that didn't happen. So I got the Bible, I stole it from the hotel, I put it in my backpack, got on the plane, and I was surrounded by all the skate team, and they were looking at me, and they must have been tripping because they're like, this guy, is a, he lives his life like a pirate. And I just remember looking at him saying, you know what? If God's real, I'm gonna find him because he's in this book, this is God's word. So I just read that Bible, that Gideon Bible, for six hours straight, all the way to LAX, and I remember I landed, and I just had peace in my life for the first time in my life, I think. I just felt peace. The next morning, I wake up, I hear this song singing through my head. I remember just getting up out of my bed, and opening my eyes, and I was just, and I hear the song singing, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in him. And it kept repeating over and over, it's just like this little song. I'm tripping out at this point, and I'm like, I gotta call my dad. My dad's a Christian. He could tell me what this means. I call him up, I'm like, hey, dad. I'm like, dude, I gave my life to the Lord in Panama City. You know, I'm coming off drugs. I go, I have a, a, a heroin addiction, smoking crack, and using a lot of cocaine and drinking a lot. And I said, but I gave my life to Jesus in the hotel room. But the problem is, I woke up this morning, and I hear the song singing through my head. This is the day the Lord has made. And he said, Ryan, that's the Holy Spirit and God is calling you and he has a plan for your life. And at that point, I knew that God was real. I just started following him, reading, praying, going to church. I decided I'm not gonna sleep with girls because, you know, I know it's in the Bible that I shouldn't be like sleeping with girls. I'm not using drugs, I'm going to church, but I'm watching porn because I'm like, no one knows about that, it's a secret, secret deal. But as, as I'm going to church, God's working in my life, he's transforming my mind and my heart. And all of a sudden I come to this verse in Matthew and it talks about Jesus said to the disciple, he said, if you wanna be my followers, you gotta turn from your selfish ways, pick up your cross and follow me. My porn problem and the things I wanna do, I gotta grab that and throw it on the cross and crucify it and kill it. Just the way uh, Jesus hung on the cross with his flesh and, and died for our sins. My flesh has to die on that cross. I gotta follow Jesus. So I stopped watching porn and I start, you know, every night I go home, the, the, you know, I'm getting these thoughts of watching porn, but by the power of the Holy Spirit that's working in my life. I'm praying to God, I'm like yelling at God, like God, help me, help me. I don't wanna watch porn, Lord. I wanna follow you. I don't want to, to, to say something and do something else. I wanna be like you. I wanna be like the disciples. And I just start following Jesus. And then an opportunity comes up that, you know, that I can go to Israel and I'm like, I wanna go to the Holy Land. I wanna go see where Jesus walked. I wanna, I want, I'm going through the Bible, I wanna know. So I called Sonny Sandoval, the lead singer from POD, and said, hey, dog, I'm a, I'm a Christian now, and I'm going to Israel, and do you want to roll out? A couple days later, we ended up in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed to the Father, and Pancho Juarez gave this story. He said, you guys, you go make peace with Jesus, and you go get rid of whatever you got to get rid of and leave all that baggage here at the Garden. I remember going out there to the garden. And I just prayed, I said, God. I said, I don't know what you're gonna do with me. I don't even know what you can do with me. Like, who am I? Like, I, I don't even know how I can serve you. But I said, if you want me to follow you, and you wanna use me, 
and you want me to share my story, then have someone contact me outside of my immediate circle to have me share my story. And if you call me out, then I'll go and I'll share my story and I will not go back to the to the um, to my old job and I will follow you wherever that takes me. And I said that prayer and I happened to get a phone call the next day. And it was this guy, Derek Nider in Calvary Chapel, um, Las Vegas, and he said, Hey man, I would love for you to come out and share your story at my church. I heard you got saved. And I was like, yeah, I'll come, I'll come. But after I hung up the phone, I was just like, I was just joking, Jesus. That was a joke. I didn't know that, <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna happen. Without me smiling. It's been five and a half years since I watched it, but I'm gonna be honest, like over the last four years, it's been brutal. You know, I'd come home and I'm a single man and you know, I'll get those thoughts like, go turn on your computer, go turn, hit the button, go to Safari, go for it. But when I start hearing that stuff, the Holy Spirit is like, no, don't do that. I actually walked into a liquor store the other day and I saw all these porn magazines. I looked over and immediately I looked away and I was like, dude, I can't believe I just looked away. <laughs> Because Jesus says that if you become a new creation of Christ, God renews your mind. You want to know words that would describe my life? I would say, I'm not perfect. I don't have everything figured out. I'm completely rough around the edges, but I know that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, and I'm going to follow him in whatever he does in my life. My name is Ryan Reese, and I am second.